My name is Emma, also known as Lady Tick Glitter. This is my drag name. I'm a drag queen. I'm also an author, a blogger, an LGBTQ activist, and also a model. So I'm the total package. <laughs> Identifying myself as a bad bitch, first of all. Second, my pronouns are she, her, it. Drag is for me a way to express myself, a way to um, to get away from reality, a way to help other people come out if they need to come out, um, help them as well understand what they can do better than themselves so it's it's important being a drag queen is very important for everyone in the world oh darling being in drag is such an empowerment over everything so when you're having a bad day and and you having a shit week a shit month everything is going bad you put on a wig, you put on some heels, and you put on, like, we call this the mark of war when we do, when we paint ourselves. The mark of war, because we go into the war to ourselves. When I get out of my house, I have my shelves up, my makeup, and I'm going gay to the top. But in order to do that, I have to become some, somebody else. So what you see outside the house is not the person that I'm going to be inside the house. I first discovered drag by my gay mom. Um, she basically saved my life and put me in drag that day. I was on a bridge one day. I was ready to jump and she just passed by and like, it's not like everybody else who actually just looked at me and just go on their way, she stopped and talked to me. It was two days before, after I finished my conversion therapy. I was just like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm just finished. I told her about my feelings towards men. I told her about, I don't know where the fuck I'm doing. I just vented of everything that's happening to me. We talked about me going to conversion therapy and stuff like this. She put me heels, drag queen, and I'm grateful for it because I'm here, you know? That's why I'm here today, because I pursued it and I'm so excited that she, she did that for me. I come from a very, very religious family. I was adopted legally when I was two years old. Extremely religious family. And we very, very well known here in England, especially in Golders Green. It was very, very hard for me. I wanted to escape. I wanted to, to, to say, I'm done, bitch. Like, thank you. Bye. No one knew that I was gay. And then I, as soon as I came out, my whole world came, came trembling down and life happened. They sent me to my room. I was not allowed to leave my room for like three days straight. I had a potty chamber in my room. That way I will not, if I need to go, I have the pot. I don't leave my room for three days like this. And then one day my father said, get in the car. We drove and they put me in an orphanage and that was the last time I saw them. That, that was it. Done. Finished. I didn't have a real relationship with my father ever. When he abandoned me, he didn't give, give me anything. He didn't leave me anything. I want, I want to understand why. What is the thing that make a parent abandon their kid because they're different? When my father died, I cried so much. I, that, that is what um, gave me the depression, the, the depression, this is how I started depression and stuff like this. 
This is how I started drugs because the, the trigger was my father being, being, being dead. That was my trigger. And it wasn't the first time I saw someone dead. It wasn't the first time I had to bury someone. It was not my first burial. It was not the first. So for me to be destroyed like that was a turning of event for me. So the story of my brother is I made a DNA test like a year ago. Um, I wanted to know where I come from. So nothing came in, nothing for like a year. And then five months, six months ago, I think, something like this, I don't know exactly. Um, I got a hit. This match was about 40 to 47% compatibility. And then it says, brothers and sisters. I was like, nah, I might be tripping. I'm tripping, it's not possible. I've looked for a brother my whole life, and now it's just like, just like this, I have one. Just like, nah, no, no, no. <laughs> and turns out, yes, I do. <laughs> he was born also in Latvia. Um, he is 29, I think. I'm not sure. I think he's 29. And he lives in Atlanta, Georgia. So, that's in the US. And, um, yeah, we're planning on seeing each other, maybe next year. So, yeah, it's gonna be amazing. Basically, my brother is why I'm doing drag all over again. He never saw a drag queen. Never. Do you, can you believe that? Never. Never, 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 never. Never! So, I told him, like, I have this old wig, I can wear it, I can do my makeup, I can, I have this thing, I can wear it, and I will show you what is a drag queen. So, I just put my phone here, and I made him a show for 20 minutes. That's it. And then he said, you should totally do it, like, live, go to some, somewhere to do it. I was like, okay, we can try. Um, I got married to a guy called Brian. He was very violent. And one day, he didn't close the door. And so I just left. And I never spoke to him ever again, unless it was in presence of a lawyer. I went to, to Tel Aviv. It was amazing. Oh, amazing. Amazing. And I went to talk to my parents. They didn't answer me because, well, <laughs> if they did, I will freak out. <laughs> Let's be honest. I will fucking freak out. <laughs> so, for me to be able to transition, I wanted to have the full mind of myself. In order to be myself, to be who I want to be, I need to have a chat with my parents. They didn't hear me out when they were alive, so I'm gonna talk to them when they're dead. This was that part where I turned my life into something else. So it was a very important moment for me to be no to, to know about what I'm doing, to understand what I'm doing, because since that day, I went to Thailand, got surgery, and never got shit from anyone. My sexuality changed with, with, um, with my surgery. The first thing I did is I did this. I checked if it was gone. Then I knew it was gone. And then I was like, <sighs> relief. Relief. It's gone. It's done. Bye, bitch. When I'm in France and I walk in the streets, people will literally cross the road because they see me. So is it maybe because I'm a little bit brown-skinned or a little bit very much gay or, you know, the, the, 
being different in France is bad. It's very, very bad. You cannot uh, be kind of like yourself. France is, ugh, disgusting. I will not say, I will not say that French people has a bad lifestyle. I would say that French people are super fucking racist and they're not afraid to tell you that they are racist. Also, it's not a good land of opportunity when you need some. Having a nice position in France is very, very difficult. And here in London is the land of opportunities. So this is why I came here to steal your job. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm more open to my sexuality, I'm more open to uh, my drag, I'm more open-minded as well, um, because I became pansexual only when I started, when I started here. I've been pansexual since maybe like two years, three years now, before I was, who knows what. <laughs> I was something, but I don't know what exactly. I think fashion and glitter and the stage and drag queen actually chose me. I didn't choose it. It chose me. After, after all those years of trying to figure out, am I going to kill myself today? And asking myself, should I just end it today? When I wake up in the morning, it actually found me and I'm so grateful for it. I'm honestly so grateful and oftenly I think about if my parents didn't abandon, abandon me maybe it, it will never happen my life right now will never happen so everything happens for a reason and I'm so grateful for that honestly I'm at peace with myself I'm confident with my body I'm confident with my sexuality I'm confident in myself in order to, to know where you're going, know where you came from, but get lost, because then you will find your way. You will find yourself, but also it will help you um, deal, with a, deal with a problem, because what doesn't challenge you will not change you. So if you want to change yourself, you have to challenge yourself. If I die tomorrow, I will die tomorrow doing what I love, which is doing drag, put glitter on, and dance. That's it. I will die wearing heels and glitter. <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> be a queen, be a drag queen, be amazing. <laughs>